Wednesday, April 14, 2021. I now call this meeting to order. Madam Treasurer, would you please call the roll? Yes, Ms. Karstarfin? Present. Mr. Bax? Here. Mr. Ellick? Here. Mr. Gebhardt? Here. And Mrs. Seguin? Here. Thank you. As soon as the treasurer has a moment and can pull up the flag, would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. Please join me. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God, God indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice for all. Very good job. <laughs> Thank you. At this time, we will have our introductions. I would like to introduce my fellow board members, Mr. Greg Ellick. Thank you. Mr. Mike Gephardt. Mrs. Elaine Seguin. Our Vice President, Mr. Jim Bax. And I am President Ann Karstoffen. Also, we have Ms. our Treasurer, Ms. Joy Clickinger, and our Superintendent, Ms. Ann Sloss. Thank you very much. Tonight, do we have any um, board recognitions? No. No board recognition. Tonight, we do have a presentation, and that is from Eileen Stanick from uh, Meter Investments. Welcome, yes. Eileen. Yes, and if I could just give you a quick uh, yes. introduction for Eileen. Thank you. Thank you um, very much. As you said, she's from Meter Investments. They are our investment firm that we use. Uh, they are going through a software conversion, and we are going through a software conversion. I'm not sure if all of you are aware of that or not, but um, we're going to start the new software come Monday. And when I was talking to Eileen, turns out they're also going through a software conversion. So our hope is that between the two, you will end up with a more readable investment report with information on that might make more sense. So... Um, I am going to turn this over to Eileen. Well, good evening and thank you uh, board members and uh, Treasurer Clickinger for um, the opportunity to give a quick update on um, the uh, district's investment portfolio um, and what we are seeing here in the marketplace. Um, I will go ahead and um, need to be able to share the screen, please. Okay. I'm going to make you the host and then you can share your screen. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And then you have to turn me back into the host when you turn off. Okay. Hopefully that will work. Uh -oh. um, can everyone see this? Yes. Yep. Yes. Perfect. Um, so let me go to full screen mode real quick. Um, so um, I know it has been some time since we've done a presentation to the board. Uh, 2020 was certainly a, a crazy year. Um, but now that we are kind of back to almost a pre-COVID world, um, you know, Joy and I talked about this would certainly be something that uh, we would perhaps consider uh, doing uh, on uh, an ongoing basis. Joy and I do have conversations, of course, throughout um, the year as it relates to the district's portfolio. Um, and our investment activity, but just sharing that information in a more formal manner with the board. Uh, so what I've put together here is um, first uh, starting out with a review of the district's general portfolio. So this would uh, be, oh, hold on, we have a Molly Knight who wants to enter the waiting room. Can I let her? Please in? admit. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> since I'm the host, excuse me. Um, so uh, this, this uh, screen shows, um, as I said, the district's uh, general portfolio. So at the end of March, uh, there was 20207000 invested in securities, $7.6 million plus in cash. And when we say cash, this refers to funds that are predominantly in the uh, Star Ohio account. So not in the checking account of the district or um, any other liquid funds. But of the 20207000 that is invested, 
Um, as we can see, the asset allocation, uh, the um, securities are diversified across all of the permissible investment classes um, under state law, as well as under the district's investment policy. Um, and a few of these asset classes do require um, additional training, specifically uh, for the treasurer in order for the district to be able to take advantage of them. And um, Joy has, of course, completed that training. So that being said, uh, when we look at the portfolio, the portfolio statistics, um, these investments had a weighted average maturity of uh, one and a half years. So what that means is we have some securities maturing um, within a year, we have some securities maturing in two years, some in three years. On average, if we average those out, they um, mature within one and just under one and a half years. Weighted average yield on the portfolio at the end of March was uh, 1.24%. And we need to take into consideration that it's reflective of securities that have been uh, purchased you know, over time. Um, and for a comparison, we can compare that to the um, yield, current yield on Star Ohio, which is at 0.07%, or even the two-year U.S. Treasury, which is yielding less than 0.15%. So clearly, having an investment program in place has allowed the district to benefit from uh, us having locked in interest rates in advance of uh, interest rates collapsing due to the pandemic. Um, on an annual basis, the current investment portfolio will generate around $250,000 a year in interest. Now, interest, uh, of course, is received on a monthly basis, depending on the payments that are received on the individual securities. So some months, the actual interest received may be $25,000, other months it may be more, other months it may be less. But if we, on an annualized basis, uh, it does work out to about 250000 Now, the maturity distribution of the district's investments, as you can see, we um, have no maturities beyond three to four year beyond the three-year period. And that is a function of the district's five-year forecast. So as we are collectively making those decisions to invest <coughs> funds for the district, we are taking into consideration the fact that the district's five-year forecast um, you know, is reflective of funds not being available to invest beyond three years. So that is a very important consideration um, as we want to make sure that we uh, do not allow the district to be in a position where funds are invested beyond what is, um, their forecasted availability is. Our second slide here is the building portfolio. Now the building funds are managed separately in a separate account from the general fund. And that is um, done uh, due to the fact that the uh, building fund dollars were derived from a bond, from bond sales. And um, it's important to keep those monies separate and accounted for separately. So when we look at, again, cash and investments, um, in this case, of course, we all know the projects are moving along very well. It's very exciting to see these new buildings in the community. Um, so we have a significant amount of funds in cash, i.e. in the uh, Star Ohio account. That is uh, purposeful uh, so that we, in essence, have funds readily available to pay the monthly expenses as they do come in uh, from the general contractor and the like. Securities, 10 point. 873 million is invested in the general uh, in the building fund. Again, we can see diversified across the uh, asset types. Weighted average maturity is much shorter because the building project, of course, is starting to enter its final phases. Um, weighted average maturity is only 119 days. The yield again on the portfolio, the building fund dollars are yielding 0.80%. So considering that. On average, we have these securities all maturing in less than uh, four months. Um, we can see the effect of having uh, been able to purchase uh, many of these holdings prior to interest rates falling. Now we've accumulated the amount of interest that um, is being earned, received on the building fund from its inception through uh, the current holdings. And 
Uh, as we tallied it up, um, again, this is just on the investment side, additional monies, of course, earnings or received on uh, cash, but just on the securities portion, um, the building fund uh, did receive uh, a little over $3.1 million of interest. And again, we have this maturity distribution down here, which shows us um, how those uh, Funds are invested from a maturity standpoint. And again, we can see we have a significant amount of dollars maturing here within the next three months and then going forward. Now, a couple of points that do come up always is, you know, what will be the catalyst for the for interest rates to rise? Um, and so just real briefly, a couple uh, pieces that we look at. Um, first and foremost, when we look at U.S. Treasury yields, uh, this gives us an indication of market rates. Um, and we can see, of course, recognizing that we are limited by statute to five years, but limited by cash flow to three years, um, that we are still operating in an environment of low interest rates. Um, and even though longer term interest rates have increased um, you know, due to statute and cash flow, we are not in a position to be able to take advantage of those. Um, so that being said, you know, as we're reinvesting monies, you know, we are still um, adding value by being able to invest the funds to yield more than if they were sitting in a liquid investment option. Uh, and again, as market conditions change, uh, we would be looking to continue that process. Now, as I said, we do have these very short-term interest rates anchored, you know, extremely low levels. That is because the Federal Reserve controls this portion of the market, and they have been very committed to keeping the overnight rates uh, anchored very close to zero. So, as I said, what are some of the catalysts we're looking for at to see at what point will the Fed start to uh, be in a position to start to increase these rates to return them back to where they were? 2019, which would have been pre-pandemic. Um, clearly, consumer spending, consumer has to come back uh, to be able to go out and have money, spend money, and drive the economy. The consumer represents 70% of our U.S. economy. Um, so here, just briefly, blue line, we're looking at consumer spending. Uh, we can see in total, we're back to pretty much where we were pre-pandemic, uh, but um, much of that return has been driven based off of goods, uh, money spent on goods versus on services. So clearly, as no surprise, service sector has been lagging. Um, and we're seeing this also in the uh, job market. So when we look at uh, the change in what's called non-farm payrolls, a uh, significant drop when the pandemic hit, we've since have had some uh, job growth return, but we are, still have about uh, almost 10 million jobs left uh, to be recovered. So the Fed will want to see many of those jobs replaced, labor market get back to where it was prior to the pandemic in order to feel comfortable to raising those short-term rates. And just to wrap it up, um, the Fed does issue a forecast on a quarterly basis, which gives us an indication of what their expectations are for things such as um, economic growth in the U.S. That would be the change in GDP, where they are uh, projecting the unemployment rate to be, and then inflation as well. Um, so when we think in terms of the Fed mandates, they are um, uh, under Congress uh, mandated to uh, fulfill full employment and stable prices. So full employment, of course, would be uh, the unemployment rate returning back to their longer run averages and inflation, i.e. stable prices, uh, being on average 2%. So as we can see, the Fed's expectations, particularly for inflation, are that inflation will hit their target and will uh, remain there over the course of the next three years. But the Fed is also forecasting that they would have no change in monetary policy through 2023. So that being said, as we said previously, the Fed controls those very short-term rates, those overnight rates, um, until they start to change their forecast to be reflective of perhaps improved economic activity and the like, um, we would not anticipate that those overnight rates would move from their current levels. So that wraps up what I have here. 
Um, we'll certainly um, welcome any questions or comments. I have a question, Eileen. Um, so the way we're positioned now, it seems that we're benefiting from maybe some longer holdings. Mm -hmm. um, if, not, if not a lot changes, the 1.4 that we received in the last year, I'm assuming we should not. Do you, do you feel we'll get a, a 1.4% return moving forward um, if nothing changes? Um, that's a very good question. And, um, you know, very good observation that, right, the 1.4% yield is reflective of purchases we have made over the past three years. And clearly right today, as we're reinvesting monies, uh, it will be at lower rates. Um, I'm gonna flip back to this slide here. So as we can see, um, you know, a third, basically a third, yeah, of the portfolio will be maturing and will be subject to reinvestment. Um, and from a return standpoint, we would be, um, I would say it'd be reasonable to expect that we would be investing those funds uh, to yield around a 0.3. So yes, much lower than the 1.24% that the portfolio is currently yielding. So is the strategy, if it's 0.3, um, not to have that money tied up for a long time or because um, there's not a lot of difference between short term and long term? Well, the, the issue that we're confronted with as we uh, make those recommendations and have those discussions with uh, the treasurer uh, on the reinvestment side, um, the, the constraint is the, um, the time period that we can go out to. So for instance, if the five-year forecast was such that um, you know, it demonstrated that the district would have uh, you know, carryover balances, cash balances out four and five years, then we would be able to take advantage of higher interest rates that we're seeing today. But the fact that we have to stay within three years um, kind of ties our hands, I guess I would say, as it relates to being able to um, take advantage of the full market. What, 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 what is the difference in the opportunity between investing something right now for say two to three years versus six months? Um, it is about um, ranges between 0.15 to 0.20%. Oh, wow. Okay. I know. Boy, we, don't, we don't make the market, right, unfortunately. <laughs> so it really doesn't even matter. Well, okay. We it, try it, and think every little bit matters, yeah. but, but those are pretty little bits. For such a large dollar amount, it certainly yeah. is. So. Okay. Yeah, it does. I will say this, when we look back at during, you know, the last time we had zero interest rates in the front end of the yield curve um, was, you know, the housing crisis, um, you know, and at that time, the, the short term rates were even lower than where they are today. So comparatively speaking, um, I would say we're, we're not quite in as a dire spot interest rate wise than what we experienced during the housing crisis. And I think the bright spot is the fact that, you know, the, the vaccines are being um, administered broadly. Um, the efficacy is deemed to be, uh, you know, very effective. And companies, businesses, and economies are looking to reopen. So the fact that we're, you know, really feeling some pain here on reinvesting is, we believe, a short-term event. Well, I, I guess I've never, ever thought I'd be happy with 1.24% on $27 million, but it, it sounds like we're kind of ahead of the curve right now, so... Keep up the good work. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> sure. Okay, and then Eileen, if uh, there are no other questions, if you can uh, return me to being the host. And I think you did. Oh, perfect. Or maybe. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. That's correct. Okay. Um, if you go to my picture and you put the cursor 
-hmm. And then you see the three little dots. Mm -hmm. Click on those. Make host. There you go. Got it. <laughs> and so do I. Thank you. Well, thank you again, everyone. Really appreciate it. Very, um, very much enjoy working with uh, Joy and her staff. And um, very uh, honored to be, uh, you know, serving the district. With that. Great. Thank, thank you, Arlene. Thank you, thank you very you. much. Thank you. All righty. Okay, that was a lot of information. We appreciate that. At this time, we'll move on to um, board member discussions. Are there any discussion items by any board members tonight? Yes. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bax. Sure. Um, the, uh, I wanted to just give you a brief fill in on uh, the endowment board of trustees. That board met uh, last Monday night and basically just uh, reviewed fund conditions over the last year, over the last term uh, that uh, the last six or eight months. Um, but basically the, the board is going to restart granting operations or planning to restart granting operations beginning with next school year on the, what we would call the regular schedule, which is, which is, um, Basically, we'll we'll start asking for we'll Amy will will uh, distribute grant applications before the end of this school year to the teachers, and then they'll have over the summer to submit, and we'll consider those grants. We'll consider those grant applications typically in late September or early October. Okay. And so that's, and that's the typical schedule, but we plan to resume that for this, this coming year. Um, the board is also considering a golf outing for this, uh, for this coming fall. Typically we've done that. We've done, we've held that event in June, late May or early June, but that's doesn't seem, we just don't want to do that. It doesn't seem like it's a good time to do that yet. Um, so we're kind of the uh, we have tentatively thinking sometime this fall, along with a possible change in venue, and we'll communicate or I, I'll I'll communicate more as as if, as we uh, get our details put together and see how things things see how things shake out. But um, but that would be that would be nice if we could do that as well. So okay. that's the latest on Thank that. You. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Mr. Um, Gephardt, did you have an update as well? No. Did you have an update, Mr. Gephardt? On, on what? No. I, I assume that you were about to say something. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. I just, uh, I've had uh, several people asking about the um, graduation. So um, just hopefully we can get some information pretty soon people are, some parents are getting a little bit antsy and asking me questions and yes. I don't have answers so well um, Annie we just met um, today with uh, Tim and cabinet and we're getting another round of information from Dave Cavell Friday morning so we should have it out real soon early next great. week great um, but we we don't want to give out the wrong information, so we're trying to get the most accurate, but things just kind of opened up a yeah. little bit from the state. So we did, we're glad, you know, everyone's in the same boat, but we're hoping to put some things out next week. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Madam President, um, yes. one other note on the endowment, on the endowment board, we do have, um, we do have a few scholarship opportunities and I was in contact with um, with counselors there at the um, at the high school, and we've got all that information put together. And so I think we're offering, I think we're offering a total of four, total of four scholarships. And they these are, these have been scholarships that the board has offered in the past. Um, so that information's went out. So that's also underway. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, appreciate it. Yeah. Moving on to um, item F, um, meeting minutes. The board meeting uh, minutes have been posted, so I will entertain a motion to approve the 
uh, Board of Education Records of Proceedings for the meeting for March 17, 2021, as detailed in Enclosure F1. May I please have a motion? So moved. Moved by Mr. Mike Gephardt. May I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Elaine Sequin. Are there any questions or discussion? None. Madam Treasurer, would you please call the roll? Mr. Gebhardt? Aye. Mrs. Seguin? Aye. Mr. Bax? Yes. Mr. Ellick? Aye. And Ms. Karstarfin? Aye, thank you. Motion carries. G is Treasurer Action Items. Okay, I only have one item this evening, and that is the uh, donations. And we would just like to express appreciation for the gifts that are listed on the agenda. Thank you. I will entertain a motion to approve the items recommended by the treasurer as presented. May I please have a motion? So moved. So moved by Mr. Uh, Greg Elliott. Could I please have a second? A second. Second by Mr. Jim Bax. Are there any questions or discussion? None. Madam Treasurer, would you please call the roll? Mr. Alec? Aye. Mr. Bax? Yes. Mr. Gebhardt? Aye. Ms. Sequin? Aye. And Ms. Karstarfin? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, treasurer other or treasurer report? Um, I don't have any other, but I would like to uh, further comment on the comment I made earlier. And okay. that's about our software conversion. Okay. Um, we're not, we're not like changing software, but the software we use, the state software that we use is requiring us to do this conversion. And it's going to be great, but you know, I don't know if any of you have switched uh, softwares before. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty, um, we're getting anxious about it. Um, by Monday, we've been through lots of training. Um, on Monday, we should be on this latest and greatest software. The current software we're on is actually DOS based. Okay. So That's this, oh this, goodness. yeah. That's old. I haven't heard that in a while. I uh, know. Wow. And this moves us into, you know, user friendly stuff, software you can use your mouse with. Huh? Wow. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And I've used that software for, 35 years, you know, so I knew how to get around it, make it do what I wanted to do. And now this new easier stuff, I have to relearn. And so does everyone else. So keep your fingers crossed. Um, come Monday, we'll be, we'll be on the new system. Okay. Right. That's wonderful. So, Good luck. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Any um, OFCC or OF? OSFC report sports come. Okay, no. moving on to K, which is uh, superintendent action items. Hi. Thank you so much, Madam President. First, uh, to approve the agreement of Ohio Medicaid program services. This is an annual uh, approval uh, that we do each year. Next, to authorize the three-year contract for security service with uh, WICGARD. And that concludes my action items. Thank you. I will entertain a motion to approve the action items recommended by the superintendent as presented. We'll May I please have a motion? That was motioned by Mr. Jim Bax, I believe. May Come I please on. have a- That was Ellie. Ellie. Mr. Elick. Oh, thank you. Please don't call me Jim Bax. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Elick. Okay. Mr. Elick. <laughs> <laughs> May I please have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Mr. There, now we're both in. Thank you, Mr. Bax. Sure. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, I had a question. The crossing guards are supplied by Whitguard. Mm -hmm. I read that in there. So, yes, they. the crossing guards have, um, when we took that over from the city, um, we, oh. we used uh, Whitguard because they were already doing the security at the high school at the time. So they provide that service for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Are we still in communications to try to partner with the city again, hopefully? Yes. I had several uh, communications again this week 
Madam President, and they are looking into it. Um, and what Ms. Uh, Madam President's referring to is just our partnership. Most crossing guards are supplied by the city themselves in most cities. And as you know, we partnered with the city and, and helped out with that, and we're trying to partner again. Okay. So. All right. Madam Treasurer? Mr. Alec? Aye. Mr. Bax? Yes. Mr. Gebhardt? Aye. Mrs. Seguin? Aye. And Ms. Karstarfin? Aye. Thank you. Motion carried. Um, L is Superintendent Udther. No other? No other, but I okay. do have personnel items. Personnel okay. action okay. items recommended by the superintendent. Yes. First of all, to approve the retirement of the following certified staff, uh, Steve Large, who uh, I used to work with over at Oakwood. He has 18 years in the district, but did did work for, uh, some of you may remember what's called Boys Town back in the day. So mm -hmm. he's he's been around for quite some time and we're uh, sad to see him go, but wish him luck. Uh, to approve the unpaid leave of absence for the following certified staff. To approve the following district and non-district game workers for athletic services as listed below. To approve the cancellation of the supplemental contract of the following certified staff. We did not end up having a pep ban due to COVID for the basketball games. That's why that's changed. To approve the retirement of the follow, following classified staff. First, we have Kathleen Rader. Uh, she has been an instructional pair in the district for 30 some odd years. It looks like about 34. Um, and then Don Heyer, who's been with the district for 10 years for as a utility. Um, man in the buildings. Um, also to approve the resignation of the following classified staff, to approve the appointment of the following classified administrative staff as detailed below. Uh, we found uh, a great candidate, um, Jessica Alar from University of Toledo to finally take over Julie's position in the benefits coordinator role and to approve the appointment of the following classified staff members substitutes, to approve the one year limited contract for the following classified staff, to approve the unpaid leave of absence for the following classified staff. And I think that's the longest action items I had for a while in personnel, um, <laughs> but that concludes my items. <laughs> Thank you. I will entertain a motion to approve the personnel items as recommended by the superintendent. Move to approve. Moved by Mr. Bax. May I please have a second? A second. Second by Miss Elaine Seguin. Are there any questions? No. Madam Treasurer, would you please call the roll? Mr. Bax? Yes. Mrs. Seguin? Aye. Mr. Alec? Aye. Mr. Gebhardt? Abstain. And Ms. Karstarfin? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Um, superintendent report. Yes, I do have a short report, but first of all, we just got notice that we have served our two millionth meal since wow. the COVID uh, pandemic wow. started for our families out of our Aramark wow. services. And I, I I have to say that that is a huge feat and, and all involved need to be um, kudos and pats on the back because that they've worked very hard on that. And I know our families appreciate it. Yeah. Also, great. Um, yes. we, start, great. we started back this week, um, four days a week at the elementary level and uh, knock on some wood, but all is going well. We've had to learn how to maneuver the, the traffic patterns all over again, because we've, had a while since that's been an issue, but I think everything's going very well. This weekend, every single one of our robotics teams made it to state. Yeah. So we have nine teams going down to state in Marion, Ohio. So good luck to all the state robotics team members. And also we are in the works. Uh, Mr. Kokai and Mrs. Higgins are working on our new website that will be done this summer to uh, kick off next year. And I think a great way to kick off, let's go back to normal, let's have a new website and hopefully everything will, will go well. And um, that's all I have tonight in my report. 
That's a very exciting report. Thank you very much. Um, P is Board of Education. Um, board members, are there any reports from the board members, which is one? If not, two is board policy. The second reading and adoption of the board policies. I will entertain a motion to approve the Board of Education items as presented for the board policies. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Mr. Gephardt. Could I please have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Ellick. Are there any questions on the board policy? I know that Mr. Bax gave us a um, short like synopsis of what was going on with that at our last meeting. Are there any questions? No? Okay. Madam Treasurer, would you please call the roll? Mr. Gebhardt? Aye. Mr. Alec? Aye. Mr. Bax? Yes. Mrs. Seguin? Aye. And Ms. Karstarfin? Aye. Thank you. Motion carried. At this time, um, I will I will entertain a motion to request an executive session for the purpose of, of considering the appointment or and or discipline of a public employee or official as and as authorized under Ohio Revised Code ORC section 121-2. Could I please have a motion? So moved. So moved by Mr. Ellick. May I please have a second? Second. Second. Thank you. At this time, we will be entering into executive session. And I'll do the roll call. Yes. First. Okay. Mm -hmm. sure. Mr. Mr. Alec. Aye. Mr. Here, Max. Whichever you'd like. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Gebhardt. Aye. Mrs. Seguin. Aye. And Ms. Karstarfin. Aye. We will be entering into executive session. It didn't say like any action to follow or anything like that. And do you know, do we anticipate any action to follow? No, there will be no action to follow. Okay. Okay. Thank you.